the planet shakes from a terrifying roar. A caldera the size of Dallas, about 1,000 square kilometers, has risen more than three meters, possibly even more. The air in Europe is already filled with gray, poisoning all living things. Transportation is paralyzed. The streets of San Francisco and Los Angeles are buried under drifts of volcanic ash. The west coast of the USA has been turned into a dead zone. This is not the result of a nuclear bomb explosion, not the beginning of World War III, nor did an asteroid fall on the planet. It's just the eruption of the most famous supervolcano in the world, Yellowstone. Life on Earth will never be the same again. The largest evacuation in the world has begun. The most pessimistic scenario of a supervolcano eruption is this. It will be an explosion comparable to the detonation of 1,000 atomic bombs. The surface of the supervolcano will rise several meters above the ground and then collapse into a crater half a kilometer in diameter. An ecological catastrophe will occur on Earth. For the USA, the eruption of Yellowstone would mean the end of existence. It seems that Yellowstone is indeed the main supervolcano threatening the entire planet and stirring the minds of its inhabitants. But why has it become so famous? And why are people so afraid of it? When will the legendary supervolcano erupt? And can we hide from it and survive? So Yellowstone National Park, located in the northwest corner of Wyoming, is one of the most picturesque places in the USA. It attracts about 4 million visitors annually thanks to its pristine forests, hills, and notably stunning geysers and hot springs. Interestingly, the volcano itself was discovered relatively recently, only in the 1960s. Travelers and park visitors reported geysers with boiling water. However, it was only after obtaining satellite images that the vast caldera area could be recognized. However, it is precisely its location beneath the surface that gives it its fame and danger. Underneath the Yellowstone caldera, at a depth of about 8 kilometers, lies a massive bubble of hot magma where temperatures reach 800 degrees cells. This explains the heating of the water sources and the release of carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide from under the ground. The supervolcano is associated with a plume, a hot mantle flow that moves from the base of the mantle to the Earth's surface. The length of this plume is about 660 kilometers, and in recent research, scientists have discovered that the magma beneath the supervolcano's caldera is actually much larger than previously thought. This potentially could allow the volcano to erupt for several weeks or even months. Essentially, America sits atop a powder keg, and satellite images prove that turbulent processes are occurring beneath the Earth's crust. Many signs point to an impending eruption. Moreover, the thermal area of Yellowstone National Park produces heat 35 to 40 times more than the rest of North America. Yellowstone Volcano is not dormant. It is in a state of restfulness. Annually, within the caldera, there are between 1,500 and 2,000 earthquakes, most of which have a magnitude of no more than 1.5 and are usually not felt by people. The last major earthquake in Yellowstone National Park occurred at Hebgen Lake in 1959, measuring 7.5 on the Richter scale. It resulted in a massive landslide that partially destroyed the dam protecting Hebgen Lake. Sedimentary rocks displaced by the landslide blocked the river downstream, creating a new lake known as Earth Earthquake Lake. As a result of the earthquake, 28 people lost their lives. Several geysers erupted in the northwest part of the park. Large ground cracks emitting steam appeared, and some previously clear hot springs turned muddy. In June 1975, another earthquake with a magnitude of 6.1 occurred within the park, but the damage was minor. Over a three-month period in 1985, about 3,000 small earthquakes were recorded in the northwest part of the park, apparently associated with subsidence of the Yellowstone caldera. However, when discussing massive eruptions, research points to three main events. The first occurred over 2 million years ago, when 2,500 cubic kilometers of magma erupted, reaching heights of up to 50 kilometers. This eruption destroyed mountain ranges and formed the Island Park Caldera and Huckleberry Ridge Tuff. The second powerful eruption took place 1.3 million years ago, ejecting 280 cubic kilometers of material, forming the Henry's Fork Caldera. The third eruption, 640,000 years ago, was half the size of the first, but caused the collapse of the volcano's summit, forming the circular depression known as the Lava Creek Tuff. 
Studies show that over the last 17 million years, Yellowstone has experienced over 140 eruptions, all significantly shaping the formation of the caldera. The likelihood of a new eruption today is extremely low, estimated at less than 1% per year. However, scientists note an increase in the rate of uplift of the Yellowstone lake floor and rising water temperatures, indicating possible changes in volcanic activity. Yet, according to scientists' calculations, the chance of an eruption starting in our time is low, at only 1% per year. Volcanoes do not follow established rules or strictly defined scenarios. They erupt when enough magma accumulates underground and pressures force it to rise. In other words, predicting a volcano's eruption with certainty is impossible, but sooner or later, it will happen. These are the warning signs. Magma approaching the surface at an increasing rate, significant uplift of the Yellowstone Lake floor, rising lake temperatures, and increased gas emissions, along with more earthquakes. So what happens if Yellowstone erupts? If the supervolcano erupts, the consequences will be catastrophic. A super powerful explosion will launch rock debris, ash, and magma into a column about 50 kilometers high, effectively obliterating Yellowstone Park. Nearly all life within a 1200 kilometer radius of the volcano will perish almost instantly. This is just the beginning, within minutes after the explosion. The lava lake will spark numerous fires and smoke will fill the skies. However, against the backdrop of a massive ash cloud spreading in the upper atmosphere, causing a prolonged night, the impact of the fire smoke seems less significant. Soon, toxic volcanic ash will begin to fall to the ground. These sedimentary deposits of scorching poison will reach a layer of meters thick, inflicting the most damage on the continental United States. Wyoming and neighboring states will be buried under this deadly blanket. Major metropolises like Los Angeles and San Francisco will be covered in layers and chunks of volcanic debris. Even other areas will see ash fall. The southern U.S. and northern territories of Mexico will receive several millimeters of ash. Central southern Canada will suffer much more with tens of centimeters of toxic ash. All of this will lead to irreversible changes across North America. A third of the entire continent will be wiped off the map. Even though the specific direction and intensity of ash dispersion depend on the weather, the consequences for all will be profound. The death toll will be immense. Measured in the populations of entire cities, such as Salt Lake City, with 1.2 million people. That's just one city. The scale of destruction will span five states. However, it's not just the United States that will suffer. The explosion will trigger earthquakes felt in every corner of the world. Mass eruptions of small volcanoes, including, including underwater ones, will begin. This will cause tsunamis that will sweep away coastal cities. Moreover, acid rains will destroy much of the plant life. The ozone hole will increase tenfold, significantly intensifying the impact of solar radiation on humans. Some neighboring countries near the U.S. will cease to exist. Due to the earthquakes, pipelines, roads, and power lines will stop working. The atmosphere will become so densely saturated with ash that a volcanic winter will ensue. Sulfur dioxide will block sunlight, plunging the continent into darkness. The most densely populated countries will suffer first. According to the UN, food supplies will last people only 74 days. Over 2 billion people will perish from starvation. All of this resembles a true apocalypse. The duration of the volcanic winter, if people do not intervene, could last about four years. Due to climate changes and adaptation to new living conditions, people will have to learn to survive, although success is not guaranteed. Is it possible to prevent such a catastrophe? Most likely, the only thing we can do is prepare wisely. However, science is not standing still, and perhaps in the future, we will be able to harness the forces of nature and prevent potential threats.